Hi YouTube, I'm Dave Power. I work in DoubleClick in the UK New Business Team. I'm here to talk to you about data-driven marketing. As a part of my role, I manage a number of events within the future of data category and we talk about all things data relevant to marketing technology. See, 90% of the Fortune 500 companies are in investing in big data initiatives. We've heard that in 2017, the CMO will spend more on technology than the CIO. The data market will be worth over 50 billion in 2017. So all of this shows us that data is becoming a bigger trend and a faster trend than ever before. So what's quite interesting when we talk about a data-led organization is really understanding what is it. You always think about customers like Google, Facebook, Twitter as their technology companies. But the reality is everyday companies, small to medium businesses, are all data-led organizations. When we asked a few of our customers and asked the people that, that come to our events what the challenges around a data-led organization are, the first one that comes up over and over again is hiring. Now, it may sound simple, but hiring very strong people is something that everyone struggles with. Other challenges for businesses with regards to a data-led organization is finding data that truly matters to your business. Given the amount of data available and the growth and trends towards this big data world, what actually makes a difference to your organization? What actually makes you a more profitable, better run business? And the last challenge was, how do you structure in this world? For example, think about something like analytics, okay? What happens on your website? Where does that tool sit? So with regards to a solution, we really need to understand the importance of process and the importance of connecting the data that we have available to us. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that from an agency point of view or client point of view, you need to have access and be able to connect the different data points that sit within your organization. So customers generally set up in silos. You're the marketing team, you're the sales team, you're the IT team, you're the legal team. Agencies will set up with strategy, planning, media buying, IT and reporting. And again, things like analytics are relevant to all of those teams. So what one thing in Google that we really, really approach and appreciate is having cross-functional teams. These cross-functional teams allow you to have skills from all different parts of the organization. By having access to all of these skills, in addition to the access of this data, then you're in a much better position to solve the business challenges you face. There's three other things I'd look at in improving my organizational structure. The first is knowing your data. You have to understand what's important to your business. If you don't understand what data point improves your business function, then you're never gonna make an improvement. The second point is creating a culture. Now that may sound a little bit fluffy, but I think it is so unbelievably important given that everyone we speak to says people are the most important part of any data-led organization. The, the third part is using tools to minimize friction. Don't make life difficult for yourself. A final solution for how you can solve having data inform and lead your, your organizational structure is actually looking at the structure. It's important to look at three things. Knowledge, company size, and percentage of revenue growth. Knowledge is all about what kind of expertise do you have within your organization? A company size is very important because if you have up to a thousand people or less than a thousand people or less than a few hundred people, that should absolutely inform how you structure your organization. Revenue growth is incredibly important because revenue growth determines how quickly you have to move as an organization. If you have high revenue growth and you're moving incredibly quickly, then you need to have a very dynamic organization structure. If you don't have high revenue growth and you're moving at a, little, a less pace given the maturity of the market, then you can have a little more structure. And I'll give you some examples about that now. The first organizational structure we're gonna look at is one that has a high growth, a very savvy workforce, and is a very large organization. Now, given the structure you're seeing here, this is something that will facilitate um, a hierarchy while not having too much of a focus on hi hierarchy, but also facilitate the growth um, needed. And that growth is, is easier done by the lack of structure and the lack of a very strong linear aspect to the structure. The next organization structure we're gonna look at is for a new high growth um, organization that very few people are experts in, but that is still very, sorry, very big. So it has over a thousand employees, but it's something that people don't really understand. Now, the real kind of cyclical nature of this organization structure lets people really develop and people help share that experience and gain that knowledge together. The next organization structure is for a new, again, a new skill base, new industry, something that few people have an expertise on, is a smaller organization with significantly high growth. And the key to this is, this is kind of generally one leader with a real pure vision and a, and a great strategy, helping support all the people that work for him or her. The last organizational structure we're gonna look at is in an industry that's very savvy, so there's a lot of knowledge out there, but, and you hold some of that knowledge within your organization. 
They're, it's a small organization, so there's fewer than a few hundred employees, and there's high growth. I think what's important to bring this to life is this is very similar to some of the agency structures you'll see within the media landscape, and a really good example of something that's changed, but also kept the growth within the industry. It's all about people, and that can't be highlighted enough. Avanash, our leading analytics expert in Google, said 90% of the success of analytics is down to the person using the tool, not the platform itself. Next time you hear from me, I'm going to be answering the question, is real-time data really influencing media planning? Thanks, guys. See you next month for some more data-driven marketing chat.